Hello everyone, my name is TNG Street Rider and today I'm going to answer a very simple question and that is, should you play Aura Kingdom? Uh, now for those of you who don't know, Aura Kingdom is a free-to-play MMO released recently by Aria Games and um, it is technically just still an open beta but this is kind of the same open beta as a game like Neverwinter went through last year and so it's very fair to look at the game and see what it offers and that is exactly what we're going to be doing today uh, as you can see right now I'm at the character select screen this is my character that I've been kind of playing on and checking out and to show you guys what this game has to offer we're going to quickly create a new character and as you can see at the bottom of the screen there are eight classes there is the Guardian, the Ravager, the Duelist, Gunslinger, Grenader, a Bard, the Wizard, and the Sorcerer. And something that is really great about this anime free to play game that is not very common in the genre is that all of the uh, characters are not gender locked so you can be male or female of any of the character classes it doesn't matter so if you want a male bard you go ahead you want a male wizard go ahead it doesn't matter today I'm going to be taking a look at the ravager because a giant axe looked pretty cool to me and uh, I already have a duelist as my main character so we're going to look at the character customization options. Uh, they're not... They're about World of Warcraft level. You won't find anything as in-depth as a Final Fantasy or an Ion. Um, which some would say Ion is a superior free-to-play game to this. However, this game is brand new. It has a very nice graphic art style. You can see it's a little bit cell shaded and not completely anime-esque. But um, I'm going to zoom in here on the face your options of top male or female um, everything else is kinda just subtle changes depending on what you really are looking for I'm just gonna go ahead and pick that one cause he looks mean that's a very long hair on a male um, let's see what else they have that. So a lot of interesting options. That's really a kind of old school Ronin type. Uh, as you can see, if we go through the female options, pigtails, long hair, very standard options. Nothing too spectacular here. Nothing that's gonna um, really grab your attention unless this is your type of game. Let's let's go with that. Why not? Uh, only four different colors for hair color, and that is. That doesn't matter, that's whether you're male or female, you only get the four color options. Uh, same thing with eye color, male or female, doesn't matter, you only get the four. Uh, and skin tone again, male, female, doesn't matter, only the four. Um, and this is apparently their black guy. You know what, why not, we'll go with that. Just, just because. Now, the reason why I have gone ahead and taken a look at this game was because... I was really, really bored with pretty much every game that I was playing, and I needed an MMO to at least take up some of my time. Aura Kingdoms, the best thing about it is that it has collectible creatures, as you can see here. Everyone starts out with a choice of one. Now you can choose at the start of the game from the Eternal Youth, which is this little guy here, the Cherry Slith the Daring Dragon, and the Regal Unicorn. Each character also has the stats over on the side. They can do single target, area of effect, evasive, you know, etc. You can either match these up to what your class does, either, again, single target, area of effect, healing, or you can try to cover your own shortcomings in your class. Um, so, for example, I'm AoE, this character has a little bit of single target and healing and, and a lot of support which it will provide to me in combat. 
This character has good single target, decent area effect, which my character may be lacking on a little bit of single target, but it has it offers no support or healing whatsoever. A little bit of support, but not much. And again, as you can see, they're all kind of they all do different things. They they basically fit different archetypes. This is more of a tank healer. This is more of a fighter, and this is more like a rogue. So. For the purpose of the video, I'm actually going to go with the dragon, just because it's a dragon, and we're going to take a look at the tutorial. And this is the start of the tutorial in the game, and I'm just going to skip through the dialogue quest because one thing about this game is that the quests are not very interesting. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the options menu. You see, you can reset the UI, select character, system settings, which is what we want. And these are all the system settings. You can go into in-depth details with every single um, effect, or you can kind of just set it to different uh, presets up top here. One thing that I unfortunately do not like is that in this game, you cannot turn off point to click or click to move. That's what I meant to say. Um, click to move is always on so what I've done is rebound it to the left mouse button because I'm less likely to use that uh, for clicking to move but you can scale the UI so you can play it on TVs no problems the key bindings are fully re uh, rebindable so pretty comprehensive menu as far as system options go again the only thing really missing is the ability to turn off click to move uh, other than that, it does. You can use your WASDs. There is double jumping in the game, as you just saw. Equip the axe. So this is supposed to be the uh, the in-game store. It's mostly boosts and extra backpacks right now, or bigger backpacks. Uh, there's also a lot of costumes, but there's not really anything that is pay to win uh, because PvP is a very big part of this game fortunately so that's that's something that a lot of people will be will like so I went and equipped in my axe go in to complete the quest there's not really any talking in the game everything is text based as it should be in a, a free to play game like this that way they can get content out a lot quicker and we're going to go and take a head a look at this. We're just going to complete the tutorial really quick and then I'm going to take you on to my higher level character so you can see what that's like at higher levels. But one thing about the art style is it's very, very nice. Uh, especially for a free to play game. There are a lot of these out nowadays, but the uh, they've gone a little bit further with their style. You'll see that the uh, art animations and the assets are very nice, very comic booky, I think, which is great. And the, the animation quality is probably my favorite part of the entire game because it's just so good. Uh, and you'll see that again, even more on my higher level character. Uh, every move, every animation is detailed, it's pretty varied and very fluid as well so now, something interesting about the game is that uh, if you're looking for a hardcore experience in mmo turn off the video now because this game is definitely not it uh there is only one resource that is held Everything else is cooldown based, so you don't have to worry about HP, I mean about uh, MP management or, you know, a, a stamina system or anything like that. It's purely cooldown based, very easy uh, for everyone to pick up and play. They do have the uh, telegraphs, which I feel personally telegraphs were added in after you saw that Wildstar was going to do them. Uh, because they don't actually change much about them. You can kind of move out of the way of them, but there's no actual dodging in the game, as far as I know. I 
have seen can kind of do the jumping to get out of the way of something. But, again, that's not active dodging. That's not, you know, Wild Star or Guild Wars. So I feel like the telegraphs were put in as kind of an, uh, an afterthought. Because bosses in the game also still have the tells, which are more reminiscent of something like a World of Warcraft or uh, you know some of the older MMOs. So they, were, I feel that they kind of started off in that vein, and then they said, "Oh, well, Wildstar is doing telegraph just like Guild Wars. Well, maybe that's the future, and we'll add that in." And you know, maybe it is the future, but it's not not well implemented. And uh, right here, you see, uh, this is a combination attack. That's something that's just very, uh, you see a lot of Basically, combination attacks are done with you and your pet together. They are not low cooldown, only the one tutorial low cooldown, so you can kind of see what it looks like. But they're very powerful attacks, very cool looking. Um, all of the animations in the game are done amazingly. That's one of the most positive things I have to say about the game. So I'm burning alive. Don't know why. But here we are. This is kind of their load screen. And the, the tutorial is told through the flashbacks. So that's why it's saying this is a dream or a vision of things to come. Many lifetimes ago. An object of incredible wonder, the Tube of Gaia, used its limitless power. And here we are in the world at the start. Uh, again, just going to skip that. But you'll see right away, uh, your character changed a little bit. He's not as fierce looking, and the overall world is very, very bright and colorful, um, which again, reminiscent of these very free-to-play anime style games. So now that, so here's another player. There are mounts in the game, although mounts are not the only way to travel. So that's a higher level player with a mount. This is the starting mount right here that you get. It's an ostrich, nothing particularly fancy, but it is free. Um, and this is another pet, which you unfortunately did not get to see my dragon. Uh, you do have to level up quite a bit to get access to the dragon at first. I think it's like level eight or nine that you first get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video and I will be back on the higher level character to show you guys a little bit more. Okay, so here I am, I'm back on my higher level character. This character is the duelist. These are two swords, as you can see there. Go ahead and bring out my pet, which is one of the defining features of this game. My pet is the little young elf. Uh, I think he's called the Eternal Youth. Yes, he is. There we go. And uh, just want to go ahead and show you a couple of the systems in the game. One of the first systems you'll notice is upon leveling up, you'll have your stats here. You have offense and defense. After level 10, you'll start to gain one uh, defensive point per level and one attack point per level. You'll start earning these attack points at level 2. Okay, And you can put each point for offense into your damage to increase your damage flat out, your crit, or your speed. Um, and again, that's basically how you uh, determine what build you're going to have. Same thing with defense. You do HP defense or evasion again it depends it's basically just on how you want to play your character and your class and you can reset these at pretty much any time uh, so it's it's really beneficial to experiment and make the game uh, I'm sorry make the character the way you want to play uh, in addition you have your envoys pat and your envoy's path is actually pretty cool. This is your skill path. This is how uh, you further differentiate your character from other characters in the game. Every two levels, you get one point in this, 
and you'll be able to pick a little tile. Uh, tile starts here from the center of the screen which will change based upon what class you pick and then you can go out. Um, I've gone of course for extra experience because I like getting extra experience. Uh, I've also gone for attack speed and school, cool skill, uh, skill cooldowns. There we go. And uh, extra evasion since that's what I have put in most of my points into. But this will actually, your envoy's path will actually change based upon the class you're playing. And uh, you, at the, the higher tiers, at the very outside, you'll actually get active skills that you can use um, when you get, when you unlock your secondary weapon at level 40. And uh, to show you what that looks like, this is your general skills menu and as you can see you unlock skills in your main class all the way up to level 30 um, you unlock passives and masteries all the way up to level 41 uh, and then the higher level versions of your masteries you'll actually get as you're uh, questing in dungeons they drop as your reward for killing bosses and then you can go ahead and use that to upgrade to the better version of what you may already be using. So pretty uh, pretty comprehensive system for a free to play game and it's actually really really impressive what they've uh, gone ahead and shoveled into this free to play game. Again not really a hardcore game but it will serve its purpose as a, uh, as a fun MMO to play to pass your time. Now uh, earlier I showed you guys some of the uh, mounts They're, like down there there's an ostrich and I don't see anybody else using a mount right now but uh, there's also another way to get around and that is through a very blade and soul like traveling system and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now and there you go it's like a flying sprinting type thing you can actually chain multiple flights jumps uh, Right now I can chain up to 3 at level 25. It grows based upon your uh, your level. So that's something to keep in mind. And it's much, much faster than using a mount. The only thing is that when you're using a mount, uh, you don't actually have to control your character. You get on your mount and your mount will automatically go to the quest hub that you need to go to. When you're using your traveling skill like this you yourself actually need to control the character so it's depends how lazy you want to be basically uh, if you're not lazy you can get things done faster which you equates to faster leveling if you are extremely lazy you can kind of just click where you want to go and your ostrich will take you there you don't really have to do anything so simple as that uh, here we are, we've got some creatures we're going to fight. Let me show you guys the combat animation in the game. They really do look great. Very fast, very fluid. And uh, overall, the, it's just a very well put together game in terms of animation quality. Uh, it does have, like I said, the very easy point to clicking. So if you click on a mob, you automatically run to it. You click on a quest, you automatically go over to it. Uh, you don't have to uh, really put a lot of thought into it. You can kind of sit back and relax if you want to, uh, which is fine. I don't mind sitting back and relaxing once in a while because uh, it can, questing can get very tedious. And this game, Order Kingdom, allows you to kind of just sit back, relax, you can listen to some music, you don't have to pay much attention if you don't want to, and that's one of the reasons why I started playing it, uh, was just because I didn't have to worry about that hardcore experience, but it, the game does offer enough of systems to where the game is interesting, and it's just not hard, so to speak, so very casual style MMO, and again, PvP is uh, available in the form of battlefields at level 40 which I unfortunately cannot show you right now. Um, 
all in all though as you can see the color palette in this game really pops the graphics are very well done the characters have a kind of cell shaded look to them which uh, is very well done indeed uh, there are multiple different types of costumes that you can get every level I believe there's every five levels there's three different costumes to choose from which is uh, so there's a lot of options you don't have to look like everybody else but as you can see here you mostly will <laughs> so the, I mean you have to keep in mind this is a free to play anime game they're not they haven't gone crazy with the character customization options but there is an incentive to get better and better gear and uh, it's one that's not very hard to achieve uh, all in all I would have to say that Ori Kingdom is a game that you should play uh, if you really want a very simple style MMO uh, it has a very clean interface very easy to play a lot of skills uh, in the game even though it doesn't take a lot of skill to play uh, with there being only the HP to worry about and everything else being cooldown based. In addition, your summon pets that you get are actually very strong, even though and they can evolve uh, to be even stronger down the line, which means that in combat you sometimes don't even have to pay attention uh, at all. I mean, look at the, the fireball that came from the dragon. It is doing pretty much all the damage by itself. The bard really didn't have to do anything there. So, I I can honestly recommend this game if you like the anime free-to-play games. However, if you've never been a fan of anime free-to-play games, this game is unfortunately not going to change your mind. It is easy to pick up and play. It is very easy to log into and level up quickly. Um, but it doesn't offer an amazing experience for the non-anime fan lovers. So with that, I would like to thank you all very much for watching. Uh, Aura Kingdom is out now in a ongoing open beta. There will not be any more wipes. And you can go ahead and download that straight from the Aria Games website um, today if you want. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. And I'll see you all next time.